Good day everyone, I am Rose Tintiba Sunkolada from BTL Ed Home Economics 2 and I'm going to tackle about Osobel's Meaningful Verbal Learning or the Subsumption Theory that was developed in 1963. But before we proceed to the entire discussion, let us first know who is David Paul Osobel. David Paul Osobel was born in New York on October 25, 1918 and passed away on July 9, 2008. He graduated from the University of Pennsylvania with a degree in psychology. In 1976, he received the Thumbdike Award from the American Psychological Association for a distinguished psychological contribution to education. Many educational psychology theorists often criticize the expository or the presentational manner of teaching. They say that teachers assume such a major role in learning as provider of information while students remain a passive receiver of information. And according to David Osbel, instead of criticizing this manner of teaching, he proposed ways of improving it. He suggested the use of advanced organizer. His ideas are contained in his meaning uh, in his theory of meaningful verbal learning. So this is possible meaningful verbal learning or the subsumption theory. This possible theory is concerned with how individuals learn a large amount of meaningful material from verbal or textual presentations in a school setting. This subsumption theory suggests that our mind has a way to subsume information in a hierarchical or categorical manner if the information is linked or incorporated with prior knowledge or familiar patterns. And this learning is based on the presentational sub superordinate and combinatorial processes that occur during the reception of information. And lastly, this David Osobel subsumption theory emphasizes the importance of a structure and connecting a new information to old. The purpose of this theory is to help introduce a new lesson, unit, or course. It summarizes major ideas in a new lesson or unit based on the student's prior knowledge, shows similarities between old material and new material, allow students to transfer, or transfer rather, or apply knowledge, and lastly, provides for a structure for a new information. So, the most important factor in influencing learning is a quantity, clarity, and organization of the learner's present knowledge. This present knowledge consists of facts, concepts, propositions, theories, and raw perceptual data that learners has available to him or her at any point in time. This compromises his or her cognitive structure. Meaningful learning takes place when an idea to be learned is related in some sensible way to ideas that the learner already possesses. Osibles believe that before new materials can be presented effectively, the student's cognitive structure should be strengthened. When this is done, acquisition and retention of new information is facilitated. The way to strengthen the student's cognitive structure is by using advanced organizer that allows students to already have a bird's eye view or to see the big picture of the topic to be learned, even before going to details. So, as a teacher, let your students have a preview for it. For the given topic in that way, they can participate in the discussion so they can be having an idea on what lesson or the topic that you're going to discuss. Osibles believe of the use of advanced organizers is anchor on the principle of subsumption. He thought that the primary way of learning was subsumption. So, what is subsumption? It is a process by which new materials related relevant ideas in the existing cognitive structure. Osibles pointed out that what is learned is based on what is already known. This signifies that one's own prior knowledge and biases limit and affect that is learned. Also, retention of new knowledge is greater greater because it is based on prior concrete concepts. Meaningful learning take, can take place through four processes. 
Here are the four processes. Number one, derivative subsumption. This describes the situation in which the new information you learn is an example of a concept that you have already learned. For example, as you can see in the picture, your concept of birds that it has feathers, a beak, lays eggs, and it can fly. Now, you've seen a blue jay bird, new kind of birds that confirms to your concept of bird. Your new knowledge about blue jay is then attached to your concepts of bird without altering the concept. So this is the example of derivative subsumption. The second one is the correlative subsumption. This describes the accommodation of new information by changing or expanding the concept. For example, you've now seen a new kind of bird that has a really big body and long strong legs it doesn't fly but it can run fast in order to accommodate this new information you can have to change or expand your concept of word to include the possibility of being and having long legs you now include your concept of an ostrich to your previous concept of what bird is the third process is the subordinate learning it is when you are already familiar with the things that did not know the concept itself until it was taught. For example, a child recognized that it is a banana, apple, orange, and mango. But the child didn't know until it was taught that these are all examples of fruits. In this case, the child already know a lot of examples of concept, did not know itself until it was taught, to his or her. The last one is the combinatorial learning. This is when newly acquired knowledge combines with prior knowledge to enrich the understanding of both concepts. Combinatorial no learning is different. It describes a process by which the new idea is derived from another idea that is neither higher or lower in hierarchy. For example, to teach some about how plants breathe, you might relate it to the previous acquired knowledge of human respiratory, where man inhales oxygen and exhales carbon dioxide. So, those are the four processes for meaningful learning. Let's proceed to the advanced organizer. Advanced organizer is a major tool proposed by Osable and it gives two benefits. First, you will find it easier to connect new information with what you already know about that topic. And second, you can readily see how the concepts in a certain topic are related to each other. So the example of advanced organizer is the possible subsumption theory itself. So as we can see, to the advanced organizer, we can figure out what is the content of his theory. This present an overview of information about his theory by only seeing the advanced organizer. Here are the types of advanced organizer. The number one, expository teaching. It present several encompassing generalization where detailed contents will be added later. It is used at the beginning of a lesson. For example, a teacher discusses the process of absorption of water and minerals into the plants through the top and fibrous root system. Another example is comparative teaching. This compares new materials with knowledge already known by emphasizing the similarities between two types of materials and showing the information that is to be learned. For example, a teacher shows the similarities and differences among two major root and the fibrous root system. The other types of advanced organizer are narrative, scheming, and graphic organizer. Narrative presents the new information of a story to a students. And scheming is done by looking over the new materials to gain a basic overview. While a graphic organizer is visuals to set up or outline the new information. This may include pictographs, descriptive patterns, concept patterns, concept maps, and Venn diagram. 
And I guess that the end of my discussion about Ossible's meaningful verbal learning or the subsumption theory. Thank you for watching and listening. I hope you learned something. God bless.